Hello and welcome to another Blender know-how tutorial. Today we are going to uh, finish up our project that we began last time um, and that is to build this table. So we built it, last time we modeled it, pretty basic, nothing really simple. It's just to show you a little bit more techniques of how to model. Now we're going to show some simple techniques of how to texture. This is not like a um, an, like complete tutorial on how to texture this maybe correctly, but this is uh, some things to learn about texturing and the table is going to be our model. So right now let's begin. Oops, let's see, where that, there we go, let me get rid of that. So let's go ahead and begin with the top of this. So I think the, be the best way to do this is I split my screen this way for this project and the reason being is what we're going to do down here is we're going to change this to uh, where is it? The node editor, and the reason why it's long instead of this way, because normally I would split going this way, but the node editor, a lot of the stuff that you do in it works from left to right, and so it's really skinny this way. And so I'm just going to click use nodes, and you see that you have a diffuse and a material output everything that it looks what this looks like becomes because of this and the easiest way to see what this actually looks like is go to viewport material and so now it's gonna look as if what it would do kind of if it was the texture in the render so we're going to hit shift a and we're gonna do an image texture and I'm just gonna open up the image that uh, I will put into the description um, so just check below for this image of this texture. You can use any texture though. Uh, make sure that it's seamless meaning that if put end to end you won't be able to see that it repeats. Other than that you're pretty much good to go. So I'm just going to connect to the diffuse and you see it turns brown. Nothing like what the texture should be. So I'm going to split this again. So it's kind of getting a little confusing. There's three um, screens going on technically right here. So um, over here, what we're gonna do is we are um, let's actually let's go here to the UV image editor and just go click on. If you click on this little thing, it it notices that you've pulled up a picture recently, and that is um, this picture of a texture. And if we go back over here, we can hit U. Uh, wait, we got to go into edit mode, and then hit U, and we have to hit unwrap. And so you can see that if I hit seven, you can see that it puts the texture on there, but it does not look like what we want it to look like. It just looks like it's been put on there randomly, and whatever happened happened. So that is one way to unwrap, and it's probably not the most effective way though. But there's another one, Smart UV Project, that works pretty good. If we were to just rotate this um, 90 degrees, and you can just type in 90 degrees, um, it's actually not that bad. We could totally use that one. Um, it wouldn't be too bad to use that one. Um, but if we hit, if we go to the top and we hit, um, let's skip a lot of these. A lot of these are not really, these two I don't really use. The Lie Map Pack, there are certain textures on the internet that you can get that um, fit this one perfect, I guess. But let's skip down. Cube Projection is pretty simple. It puts it as if it was a cube, and for the most part this actually is. It has a few more vertices, so it kind of bugs out a little bit. You can see around the edges over here. Uh, let's do UV Cylinder. It's made for cylinders, so when not work on this it's sphere. It's made for sphere, so it doesn't work. So I'm gonna go to the top view because this next one it depends on how you look at the object. And so we want to be looking from the top because we want these lines. We want the texture here to go with this. So we're gonna look at the top and hit U and project from view. And you can see it's going the wrong way, so let's rotate it by 90 degrees. Not this object, but the texture. And 
you can see how because we project it from the view it wraps it down over top of the object in this sense the tabletop which is kind of like what happens in a tabletop you can kind of see over here it wraps it around which kind of happens with wood so that actually works out perfect and we're going to use that so the only thing is is it looks ginormous we I don't think tabletops are that big there um, so we can just size it up a little bit on the texture bigger texture the smaller it becomes over here the bigger the object over the texture the smaller it becomes over here pretty much whatever you see in these lines is what is appearing on the actual object and that actually looks pretty good right now so I'm going to move on to the next one so go out of edit mode and let's go into this one and if we're going to go into edit mode hit uh, actually first we have to create a new material um, add uh, image we can just type it in and then put that in there um, let me also do this just uh, okay yeah we're good so if we put this here oops didn't mean to do that we can just click on here and it'll open up the recently used image and it becomes brown again we're going to hit U and we're going to hit unwrap and you can see the normal unwrap provides the texture but it's like really small if we just make it smaller over here it makes it a little bit better but not quite the texture we're looking for it might work on some other objects but not here smart UV project could possibly use that if we rotate it 90 degrees that actually looks pretty good pretty realistic I think I might even keep that one that's probably a really good one your fail safe on a lot of these unwraps is the smart UV project one honestly um, it will do really well I like that texture looks good going all the way around it. Um, you can see that these are mirrored and it's because we have this mirror so if you want to apply this you can actually apply it and uh, you can hit unwrap again and then this will all be unique. Um, that's actually probably the best way to do it. Oh, you have to go out of edit mode though, hit apply and go back in here and then you and you can do the smart UV project again and rotate hit it by 90 degrees. Um, you can see now it's not mirrored it's just normal Oop. Uh, let's go back to material but actually I kinda like it it looks adds a little bit of randomness to it looks like real wood so I think I'm good uh, let's go into here to the legs and add a new material add image so we just shift A add image and I typed it in and then add the image in there, the recently used image, connect the dots, hit U, oops, go into edit mode, tab, select all the, I think you have to select all of the vertices for this to work properly, hit U, and we can go through the whole list, but we can use one of these three that we haven't used so much, and I think the cylinder one works the best, mainly because this is actually very cylindrical, if that makes any sense, it's, it's this direction which is kind of what we want. We want it to wrap these. Cube would probably work similar to um, if we were to use it. Let's see what it would look like. It's very similar. You could probably do it. The only problem is, is these don't connect and on wood they would. So if we just go back to cylinder you can see how they connect the lines. So let's go over here rotate it by 90 degrees because we want it facing up and then we can move it around until we find a texture that we like and we can size it up or size it down or size it, we can even make it wider and you can see that it's being mirrored um, you can also apply this mirror modifier and oh because we didn't redo it now we have the four legs oops so rotate it by 90 degrees and 
and put it up there. Oops, I keep moving out of material. And we can make it however we want. I actually think I might like that. And uh, no, it kind of looks a little dorky, but I mean, for the time allotted, I think it looks pretty good. So we're going to keep that. So the last thing that we're going to do is because the table is like a little bit glossy, we're going to go through and add just a simple gloss effect to this. And so what we're going to do is um, do a couple different things. I'm going to, just so that you can kind of see what we're doing, I'm going to put this on rendered and make sure that I have my GPU on. Um, go back out of render for just a second. Set up the camera. So the way the camera works is if you hit G, you can move it. You can pan around. Hit G, uh, and then middle mouse button. You zoom in. R rotate. R twice. It's like looking around a little bit. And so I'm doing that until I get a position that I personally like. Something like that. I think I like that. That's good enough for me. So now what we're going to do is position a couple. Um, get rid of this lamp. I don't like the lamp. Hit Shift A, add uh, lamp. And I like to use uh, spots a lot. There, they're generally a pretty good thing to use. They they emulate pretty realistic lighting. So I'm just going to move it. I'm going to make a simple three-point lighting. Very simple. Do some backlighting. And so I just pushed, put a lamp here, here, and here. And then I'm going to go into the side view and move this in down. And I want to select the other one. Move it down right there. And then I want to increase the brightness on this one. Nothing super fancy. This tutorial isn't going to be on lighting. But if you want to emulate this, you're more than welcome to. And if we go in here, we can look at it. It just creates a pretty realistic lighting environment. So now you can see nothing is shiny. So I'm going to right click on the top face. I'm going to go in here. This is going to be the tabletop. I'm going to create a gloss. So I'm just going to type in gloss by hitting the search feature. I'm going to go into color, into the color option, and then I'm going to put the, I'm going to hit shift A, search for an add shader, put that right here. If you just click it, it will connect the line, and then you connect this one. You can see it already added a little bit of a gloss, a little bit of the, that effect up there. Um, I'm going to go out of there. If I get up a little bit closer, you can see a lot, especially along the edges, um, that effect there. I'm going to increase the brightness on this and just increasing the brightness a little bit so that you can see the shine a little bit better and I think the shine looks better if you have lamps so that's why I put those there so you can definitely see this um, which gives it a little bit of the same effect that I had going on here where you have like the shine here um, but it's not really like a super shine and I'll, I'm going to show you how to do that as well so next uh, so go back to that tabletop if we hit another one we're going to do a multiple or uh, an add to no 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 mix that's what it is mix RGB so now what this is going to be, see this this little drag, I don't know what you call this, um, yeah this thing, if you, what we're going to do is we're going to use this as uh, a factor which is actually what it's called. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag the color into this option and the color into the displacement. Displacement, if I zoom in really close, it tells the camera what parts um, aren't going to be shiny 
which parts are going to be more shadowed um, because of the darkness of this and generally on tables the dark parts are a little bit more dull so as we do this it works out perfect if we hit factor all the way up and we zoom in to the table you can see that it adds like effect especially in these dark areas if we go back to zero less and so I like kind of like or probably around this it gives the eye something nice to look at um, that I really like and you can't really tell from a far distance but whatever so I'm going to go to the legs or to this part now and I'm going to do something very similar just search glossy oops glossy add it I'm going to do a add um, add it as well put that in there um, oh, go back and uh, mix RGB. Put it in the displacement. Put this in here, and I'm gonna create a little more factor there. You can see, especially in those areas, it has created a little bit more like dimples into the wood. Um, if you want a little bit better effect as well, especially on the glossy, uh, the Beckman I think adds a little bit more of a table-like shine. You can see it's a little bit more shiny on the edges. Uh, I'm also going to go on the legs and do the same as well. Add uh, glossy and whoops. Uh, add connect the lines and then I'm going to hit um, mix RGB color color two displacement and and you can see that we have a table uh, with pretty decent textures and you can uh, drag and adjust these if they're too strong for you that that's okay and um, honestly I think the Beckman one looks the best and you can lower the roughness it'll make it more shine like uh, with all of these um, it'll give it more like an edge whereas this spreads out the shine more pointed shine, the lower the number. Um, more dispersed shine, the bigger the number. And so, if we were to render this, it's going to look like this, or something on the signs, whatever yours may look like. So, which is very similar to this. So voila, you you have now successfully learned how to texture uh, a table, but texture pretty much anything that you would like to um, as a table as an example. So thank you so much. Hopefully this has uh, answered some of your questions about texturing. Um, please leave any comments down below. Um, thank you so much and hopefully we'll see you next time.